Good morning, students. Let's take a look at our morning message. May 28th, 2020. Dear students, Thomas Jefferson did lots of important things. I see an exclamation mark, so we got to give it some oomph. Thomas Jefferson did lots of important things. What three things did he want to be remembered for? What do you think we should remember? Mrs. Kilmer. Wow, that's a long message. We already reread the first, the first sentence. That was about how Thomas Jefferson did a lot of important things. But I think we need to reread the two questions to be sure of what we should be thinking about. What three things did he want to be remembered for? So three things that he wanted to be remembered for. Okay. What do you think we should remember? What do you think? We've been reading lots of books about Thomas Jefferson, regular kind of biographies and fun stories too, like Thomas Jefferson's Feast and Jefferson Builds a Library. What do you think Thomas Jefferson should be remembered for? <clears throat> when it says, what three things did he want to be remembered for? I'm thinking about how he even designed his tombstone, remember? Your tombstone is like the stone that they put where they bury somebody. And I remember, you know, he liked to design things. He was an architect. He designed the building of Monticello, the buildings at University of Virginia at UVA. And I'm remembering in one of the books, it said that on his tombstone, he actually specified. That means he said exactly the three things he wanted to be remembered for. I'm wondering if, if any of you could remember that. Send me that list if you can remember that, okay? And then also, I wanna know from you, what do you think? I think some of you might think some of his most important things were in the food department, some of the yummy foods he brought to America. Anyway, I can't wait to hear from you. And for today, I just have a real short, simple, last final biography of Thomas Jefferson. So this is Thomas Jefferson, a rookie biography. There's a portrait of him on the front. And on the back, it just lists the series, the other biographies that you can get. Thomas Jefferson by Simone Ripke. Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. And I think, I gotta stop and think because I think that this is a close up of this seated portrait of him right there. See that? And then that. Yeah, I think there's a connection there between those two things. He was born on April 13, 1743 in Virginia. At that time, America was made up of 13 colonies. Virginia was one of them. Colonies are made up of people who leave their homes to move to a new place. And one reason I've always liked this book so much is it has a couple of really clear, interesting maps. So here you can really see what the 13 colonies looked like along the coast of our country. And then of course, this is what the United States looks like today. And here they're all labeled, yeah? It's a very good clear map. Jefferson loved to read. He loved to hike and learn about nature too. He also played the violin. So I think that's a picture of nature to stand for, to represent how much he liked nature. And of course, there's a picture of a violin. I don't suppose that's really his violin. I think it's just a photograph of a violin to stand for the fact that he liked to play the violin. Jefferson went to college when he was 16. He worked hard and became a lawyer. A lawyer is a person who helps people understand the law. Okay. And I'm wondering, I'm thinking that might be a real picture of William and Mary, because you can still go there today. Remember he went there? In 1768, Jefferson made plans to build a big house. He called his home Monticello. Jefferson and his wife, Martha, moved in. And there's a picture of Monticello. At this time, the 13 colonies were ruled by Britain. Many people felt that the British laws and taxes were unfair. The colonists went to war against Britain in 1775. They wanted to be a free country. Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. 
this important paper told why the colonies did not want to be ruled by Britain. Jefferson wrote the main part, then other people added their ideas. So there's a picture of the Declaration of Independence, and you can actually go see that here in Washington, D.C., over at the archives. And here's a painting of the different people who helped write the Declaration of Independence, and there's Benjamin Franklin. When the war was over, the colonies were free from British laws. The colonies formed a new country called the United States of America. George Washington became the first president, right? So even though this is about Jefferson, it's also about the beginning of our country. And there's another portrait, a very famous portrait of George Washington. After Washington retired in 1796, the country voted for its next president. Jefferson ran against his friend, John Adams. Adams won by three votes. Can you imagine the president winning by only three votes? There's John Adams. And he was the second president. I'm also remembering from the house that George built about building the White House, how John Adams moved in um, before it was really even finished. You remember with his wife, Abigail? Four years later, Jefferson ran for president again. This time he won. Jefferson was the first person to live in the White House. Now that's interesting because in the book we read, it said that Adams and his wife moved in before then. I wonder. It's so interesting when you really start to delve into history and read different books. Sometimes you'll there'll be different facts and you'll be like, hmm, what is the correct, what, what's the, what are the real facts? I wonder if we could figure that one out. I'll let you know when I find out. So this is saying Jefferson was the first, but we thought we knew that John Adams was the first. Jefferson did many important things. He bought land from the French. It was called the Louisiana Territory. And here's the, another great map. I like this one. It says land owned by Great Britain was up here, kind of the area that's now Canada. And this was the United States at first. And then they bought the Louisiana Purchase the, it was the territory and then they bought it, so they called it the purchase and it had been owned by France. And this part of the United States back then, that was owned by Spain. That was owned by Spain. So Spain, France, and independent, but then the United States bought that area. And you can see how it doubled. Remember we've read that a couple times that it doubled, it made twice as big the land of the United States. Jefferson sent two men to explore the new land. The men's names were Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Their trip went very well. And you can see them on their horses. Jefferson was elected president again in 1804. After he finished his second term, he retired to his home in Monticello. He liked to invent things. His inventions made it easier to do jobs like Plowing. Plowing is when farmers turn over the earth before they plant. And remember, we read in another book that he won like a gold medal, I think, for his new kind of plow that helps farmers. And remember how Jefferson thought it was really important to help farmers. Thomas Jefferson died on July 4th, 1826. Jefferson did many great things in his life. He helped shape the United States. And this is the statue of Jefferson in the Jefferson Memorial. That's the round memorial building over in Washington, D.C. It makes me a little sad because um, we were going to go there for our field trip every year we go there. But I'm sure maybe you'll have a chance to go there on your own with your families after things open up a little. Okay, and this is interesting. This is a picture glossary. So it has pictures and labels, but not it's not using like a sentence to explain the new word. It's actually showing a picture of it. So this is kind of neat. And they're not calling it glossary, they're calling it words to know. So here we have colonies, Declaration of Independence, George Washington, inventions, well that's standing for his inventions, right? Louisiana Territory, Thomas Jefferson, Monticello, and the White House. And in the very back there's an index. So, I always like to save this book for last because even though it seems like a little book, I think it kind of brings together a lot of the information that we've learned about Jefferson, and it also has that great map. I always like going back and looking at that since I got to do something. That map that really shows all the colonies and compares 
what it looked like when we just had colonies and what it looks like now, right? So, um, what I'm going to do now is I want to show you, I've got this nice packet that I'm going to send home to you guys by email. And in the packet, we've done packets like this before, there's a couple of activities where students need to read a paragraph and answer some questions. But what I want to do is not just have you do this um, on your own exactly, of course you'll be doing it on your own at home, but I want to go over how we do highlighting, how I taught the students to do highlighting in school before we left. So I'm going to switch cameras, I'm just going to show you one of these, show you how to highlight one of these, and then you'll be able to continue and do the rest on your own. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Welcome back students and parents. So for students, this is a reminder because we've done this before in class. For parents, this is new. Um, we've talked about how we can read and reread and then highlight a text, highlight uh, the important information in a paragraph. So if I read the directions, it says read the text three times, color a star after each time you read. Okay, so you don't exactly have to do that, but you certainly want to read it a couple of times before you start highlighting. And in terms of highlighting, you can use a real highlighter. And I tell you what, parents, if you have a highlighter, this is great because this makes it very exciting for the students. They love to do it with a highlighter. But you don't need a highlighter. You can use any kind of marker or colored pencil. I'm sorry, I couldn't find a crayon to show you. You just want to be sure when you highlight that if you use anything besides a highlighter that you underline instead of highlight. Okay, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and read. So. Thomas Jefferson was tall with freckles and sandy hair. He had nine brothers and sisters. Wait, I, I'm actually going to stop right there and think for a minute. So I think this is talking about maybe when he was young, right? Okay, let me reread. Thomas Jefferson was tall with freckles and sandy hair. He had nine brothers and sisters. As a boy, his favorite activities were playing in the woods, practicing the violin, and reading books. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds right. I remember a lot of those facts. Okay, so I've read it once. I have an idea that this is about when he was young, and it's telling me about his family, about what he looked like, and some things he liked to do. So I think I'm ready to highlight. You might, well, Your student might want to read it another time, maybe two times before they start highlighting. So I'm going to use my highlighter. And remember when we highlight, we only highlight the words that we need to have jump out at us in order to remember the facts in the paragraph, the facts in the sentences. So in fact, I'm not going to highlight Thomas Jefferson because of course this whole packet is about Thomas Jefferson and that's who we've been studying all this time. So I don't have to highlight that. And I also want to remember I'm not going to highlight very many short little words like the and was it. I'm not going to highlight words like that. I'm highlighting words that really convey or tell me the information. So let's think. Thomas Jefferson was tall. Okay, tall. I think tall is important, so I'm going to highlight tall with freckles. That's kind of a fun freckles and sandy hair. Okay, so notice I'm not highlighting was, with, and. We're not highlighting any short words and or like some of the snap words we're probably not going to highlight snap words and we're also not going to highlight you know thomas jefferson because that's all this is about okay he had nine brothers and sisters okay that's a neat fact i'm going to highlight nine brothers and sisters okay now i guess i could highlight and i know i just said i don't but i think i if i go nine brothers and sisters in that case and is important nine brothers and sisters Okay, as a boy, his favorite activities. Okay, I think I'm just going to highlight favorite activities were, okay, playing in the woods. So I'm going to highlight playing in woods. Playing in woods. I don't really need the to remember that fact. Practicing violin. Practicing violin because I don't need the to help me remember that fact. If I just remember practicing violin, that's good enough. And reading books. Okay, so there, as you can see, I've highlighted tall freckles, sandy hair, nine brothers and sisters, favorite activities, 
playing in woods, practicing violin, reading books. Okay, so that was just a short lesson on highlighting, that is um, drawing your attention, drawing the reader's attention to the important facts. And then if you were using, again, if you're using a marker like this, you'll just want to underline, not color through because you won't be able to see it. If you're using a colored pencil, you'll want to also just do underlining like this. Nine brothers and sisters, okay? So that's it for highlighting, and I'll send this packet home on Shutterfly so you can do it at home. Oh, and what I also like about this packet, in the back it has um, uh, also uh, this nice math connection to the coins and the different coins and the different presidents on the coins. In this case, you're supposed to find all the Thomas Jefferson coins, which of course have his profile. That's a picture of someone from the side and Monticello. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll see you later this afternoon for our story. Welcome back, parents. I just wanted to add this little snippet on to the end of my last um, Thomas Jefferson video, and that is to recommend some schoolhouse rock cartoons, and you can find them on YouTube. Uh, this is a playlist here, uh, School Rock American History, and they're just really fun cartoons that were made around the time of the United States Bicentennial in uh, 1976. And I've already shown a couple of them to the students in class. Um, the one around that has to do with the revolution, so No More King is about uh, starting off with the pilgrims and as the colonies progress and they want to reject King George. Um, then this one comes next, Fireworks. It's about writing the Declaration of Independence. And then the shot heard round the world is the start of the revolution. This is as the revolution starts. And then the one that's uh, related to the Louisiana, oops, I'm trying to find my cursor, sorry, uh, to the Louisiana Purchase is uh, the one here, Elbow Room, the idea of needing more room uh, because of so many settlers. So I'm going to go ahead and link all these uh, videos down below today as well as send you in Shutterfly just a little blurb about Schoolhouse Rock, Schoolhouse Rock and links to some of the videos. And they also have really fun videos about language like uh, conjunction junction, what's your function or exclamation and also about math. That's uh, really quite a cool series. And of course you want to be with your child uh, as they uh, look for these or as you help them look for this on YouTube but they're really fun videos. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.